This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Of atonement. At the center of all these revelations would be the diary. In his last eighteen days on earth, when Laura's father was doomed and knew it, he had written a diary, his final farewell to the family he had just started and the daughter he had never met. That diary had been recovered by the stranger at Laura's door. It had been passed around to thousands of servicemen. How the diary would change hands and change the hearts of so many who read it would be the greatest lesson of all to Laura. Decades later, this diary started me on the long path of reporting this story. I first found out about it while researching an unrelated book. I was chasing a story about competitive birdwatching. It turned out that the greatest spot in North America to spot the rarest avian species of the 1990s had been amid the shrapnel of one of the most deadly firefights in all of World War II. Attu Island was a forbidding outpost in the far western Aleutians of Alaska, a treeless crag that natives called the Cradle of Storms, the place where weather was born. In June 1942, exactly six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan invaded and conquered Attu and several other of the barren Aleutian Islands. It was the first time since the War of 1812 that the United States had lost territory in war. To win it back, more than 100,000 United States soldiers were called into an Alaskan military campaign that culminated in the ferocious Battle of Attu. By comparison, that's roughly equal to the total size of the U.S. force dispatched decades later during President Barack Obama's surge in the Afghanistan War. The Alaska campaign had been a significant part of World War II. How had I grown up without hearing about any of this? Despite their numbers, Aleutian veterans remained largely unrecognized in both the United States and Japan. In the depths of World War II, propagandists in Washington and Tokyo were not anxious to publicize a military campaign so stained with agony and blunder. While Midway, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa headline chapters in every history of the Pacific War, the location of the determining battle in the Aleutian campaign is known mainly today as the answer to an obscure clue in a difficult crossword puzzle. Four letters, a near island, westernmost USA point, Atu. Though fascinated by the history and military significance of Atu, I kept coming back to the war diary of Laura Davis's father. He was a Japanese surgeon who graduated from medical school in California and returned home to Tokyo only to be forced into a war he did not support against the United States. I was struck by his valor and dignity. His writings made many Americans think twice about the true nature of their foe in the Pacific. U.S. soldiers were told during training that the Japanese military man was a bloodthirsty savage who had engineered the outrageous sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. The diary, however, raised the possibility that the enemy might also be a homesick father torn between his love of family and country. The writing and the situation in the diary were so heart-wrenching that it went on the 1940s version of going viral. Countless copies were transcribed and mimeographed and passed among United States soldiers. Over the years, I worked on other projects, but the messages of the diary pulled at me. I wondered how I would confront similar circumstances. Could I fight in a war I deeply opposed? What if the nation I lived in and admired had tried to kill me? If I knew my end was near, what would I write to my wife and children? Little by little, I traced the path of the diary, as well as the soldiers and families who saved it. I followed it from the military bases of Alaska to the document depositories of the War Department in Washington, D.C. and Maryland, from family rooms in Los Angeles to kitchens and courtyards in Tucson, Arizona, 
and Las Cruces, New Mexico. I found people still moved by the diary in Atlanta, Boise, Boston.